Well, good day, tubes. How is she going? Pretty good here. So, as promised, I th I said I was gonna do you a video about all the RC cars and trucks that I've been through in my career, we'll say. So, I got a few lined up here on the table. I got an eight foot table that's full already. We got more. <laughs> Anyways, this is all like stadium truck and monster trucks and one other little thing on here. And then we got another setup to do and then probably another setup to do. So here we go. All right, we'll start with Dylan's 4x4 Slash. He hasn't had this for, well, he's had it a few years now. He's pretty hard on things, but uh, he's had fun with it. But he hasn't run, rode in it, driven it, ridden it, rode in it for a while anyways, because I, I don't think we have batteries that were very good. So anyways, um, of course, of course it is. Um, still runs fine as far as I know. He's, he likes to kind of say things and then this doesn't look like it's towed in right. He likes to not tell me things usually. He breaks it and just kind of puts it away. I don't know if he figures I'll get mad at him. These things break. What can you do, right? That tow end does not look good on that one though. So, four wheel drive. It's not bad. It's a battery hog if I remember. It's got the same Valenian motor that's on, that I had my slash and uh, speed control and uh, I don't know it's just more drag I, I think I, I drove this one a little bit when he when he got her there and he was running around and I think I like the two-wheel drive better but uh, I mean this would go more places but this isn't a truck right so uh, anyway so pretty good of course he put that on there of course too Fox racing one I don't know these things are always hard on body this one's we've tried to mend her a few times and she just not great you know their bodies they give they give you with these things are just garbage. We've got a nice brand new one sitting there, but we haven't got around to doing it yet. So now here's my slash that we did a bit of competing with, we'll say. And normally these things sit quite a bit lower. They're down here more. I got this fella jacked up though because it seemed to run better. You could take a little bit more abuse when you're landing and stuff, right? So, um, but this one doesn't have a motor or a speed control on it. And, uh, oh, that's, that's maybe not good. What else am I missing? Missing something else on that, already. Something ain't right there. Oh, I see. <laughs> I see what's going on here. Let me get a light. A light. Brokey drive shaft. That's why. Okay. So that would need some work, <laughs> but good slash this one. I got a lot of miles on this one, and uh, they're light. And I'll tell you what, you get this geared right, and you put a three-cell battery in it, lipo battery. Holy smokes! You just do nothing but spin. But when they hooked up, man, they went. But anyways, still got the uh, receiver in it. Looks like. But uh, anyways, these are what Dylan kind of started off on on these Wheelie Kings. This one has the original HPI in it. And I think this might have been his second one. He got two of these because we thought, hey, let's make this go a little faster. Yeah, it's still got the Traxxas, which I'm going to call it in it. Let's make this one go a little bit faster. So I put my Valenian out of this thing and this one here, and it stripped the gears right off. It's just, just destroyed the gears and either the transmission, which is sort of buried down under here. And uh, it was quite buried. I'm like, yeah, you know what? My fingers don't work with small things like that too well anymore. So I don't remember now if that's, I think that's the body that come with it, the Scarlet Bandit. Yeah, that seems to fit on the post there. Pretty good. Pretty good, mostly, somewhat. And uh, maybe it's not the right one. I don't remember. But uh, anyway, so this one here is still run, I do believe. The battery slipped in the back, which made it really heavy on the back, so it wouldn't take much to get it to, to flip up a wheelie, right? So he just, he just loved that, but he's one, and these are only plastic gears, thin, crappy plastic gears in these transmissions. He's one for going, and then I think what actually happened, actually both of these might be junk now. He was getting it to wheelie on spot, so you'd back up and then jam it forward. <laughs> the gears and then she'd, she'd pick up but uh, I, I can't remember now because it's been so long but ooh, those are definitely better shocks than this one <laughs> but uh, something else happened with one of these two at one time I just don't remember what never drive shaft problems which is quite surprising 
you know, differential problems, they were all good. Anyways, he's had two of them. Don't really, yeah, see this one stops. That's the one that's the VXL in it, yeah. So it's got a, a bad spot in the transmission with this one. I think it's still good, yeah. Okay, remember now. Now this, I have multiple bodies for. This is the one that come with it. This is a, a rock crawler. AX10 Scorpion. These were fun, but they uh, did stuff in the competitions we were in that I didn't feel was right, so I kind of dropped out. What they did was they had um, axle, what do they call them? Axle lockers or something. I'm trying to remember how, how it works. So with these, you know, you come up to a thing while you're climbing up. As soon as you stopped and backed up, you lost a point. But these guys were locking their axle and then, then like just totally dragging the rear end around with the front end or vice versa. And it's like, really? And so really? I have to go spend another, I think it was 110 bucks for the little kit and another little, it sat up in here if I believe, I'm thinking right. It sat up in there and there was uh, another servo that did something and it locked the differential. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. But you had to get this uh, high tech servo titanium gear HS7955 TG for the high torque because you needed it to uh, run these because look at all the look at all the weights I got in there plus I think we took these apart and put weights on the inside of the rims too so this thing weighs probably about seven or eight pounds on its own so it's pretty crazy but this would climb up a pretty good you know super super low geared what were you running in this uh, 55 turn there's the gearing down there. So she uh, she would pretty much go right up a wall. It was pretty awesome, this thing. I enjoyed it until they kind of brought in that other rule, and it's like, no, you know what, I'm out of here, I'm done. So I haven't really kind of used it ever since. Now, I had a battery for this one. It might be up there, I'll get up there after. I got a bunch of stuff up there too, I gotta go look at, so. But uh, yeah, so that's the crawler. So that's these ones anyways. And I gotta get some other ones out here. Holy smokes. I don't think I'm gonna have enough room. All right, round two, here we go. <laughs> oh man, we were so following the Joneses when we were doing this stuff. But anyways, these were the little guys that we ran on these foam tiles down here at one time. Little M uh, MO3s or MRO3s, whatever they were. I think I showed you these in the last video. I think I showed you this body. All googly eyes on it. This is the one I was the racing one, anyways, for sure. Little carbon fiber swing arm thingy adjuster thingy. Oh my goodness, they were so so tiny. But that's them. We raced them really good, and we had competition races with them. I never did too good because my depth perception wasn't good. So, anyways, the way she went. These are the little Raminator trucks. This one I think was a spare parts truck that I picked up from somebody else because it's all in bits and pieces and there's, you know, these are all loose. That's where the battery went, I believe, under there. Yeah, into the little speed controller here. And this one, it's still got the clips on it. Same thing in there, but I changed this to the uh, Traxxas plug. So those are the batteries. Little LiPo batteries for it. What were they now? 7.4 volt, 1000 milliamp, two cell LiPo. I think they went about 10 minutes, these things. They weren't too bad, but look when I stored these last. My charger did a storage thing. Stored August 23rd, 09. That's uh, 13 years ago, I can't believe that. Sorry, my math was just not working there. Hmm. So I don't even know if these things would be any good now. Now there's one here that's a little bigger too. What was this one? 7.420C, 1650 milliamp. A little bit beefier. They might still charge up. Hard to say, but not likely. And then they thought, let's run these little guys on carpet, which is basically the exact as these Raminators, only tiny. Look at that little battery. <laughs> One third AAA. 150 milliamp, 4 point volt. 4.8 volt nickel metal, so that battery would probably be junk now. But we had little plugs. You just plug that back in, charge it up, plug this back in here. Had a little switch. Boy, I'm trying to remember. This is a long time ago, and you'll see in that. Uh, somewhere there was a switch hidden on these. Oh, yeah, right there. On the bottom. Right there, right there. So they were cool. Little wee guys. Little wee tiny body. It's so cute. It's like a keychain size. 
And back here we ran these on the gym floor, in the uh, school gym floor. MO3, this one's got a fair few miles onto it. If I remember right, the batteries, yeah, the round nickel metal batteries we're using. Uh oh, I don't know what that was. Slid into there anyways. And, uh, plug. Well, this one's been kind of stripped apart. It's got no speed control on it. must have took it off using something else. Oh, she broke there. That's not good. These things had a little bit of suspension. These were kits. You put these together. Tamiya. Oh, dirt and everything in there. Uh, Tamiya kits, yeah. I put, all, I put all this together, all these things here. This one here is an M05. Never raced it. I think I got it going and just we never, that's when things kind of fell apart and then we never, never raced it. So it was all, it's got a few scratches on her, but just a tester, you know. And uh, all ceramic bearings in the wheels so they <laughs> roll even smoother. Never hardly got any hours on that one and things kind of packed in. So anyways, that's all sort of the indoor stuff. This is probably my favorite one. The E-Revo. This thing has a freaking Mamba Monster motor in it. Speed controller to match, of course. And man, oh man, when this thing has uh, two, three cells, three cell in here, three cell in here, hooked in to, there it was, yeah, there's the two there. So you hook those two under the two batteries. Oh my goodness, uncontrollable speed. These tires still feel pretty good. But I love how they did their suspension on these with these push rods up to these cams. And then they sit all in here. Fantastic machine, this one. I really like this one. And the body on it was pretty much junk. So I got just a... I haven't even painted it yet. You're supposed to paint the insides of these, not the outside, right? So, but anyway, it still has its cover on well, the plastic on the outside, so still good. But uh, yeah, good machine. That one I'll probably get going again one of these days if I can get my batteries to juice up. We'll have to play with that maybe. But anyways, this is what the the, the T Max that the uh, channel is named after. My channel's named after. So that's a brand new body from a brand new T Max. It's probably from this one because I just kept using the old ones. And this has a OSTM 21 on it. Good little engine. Let's see, she'll pull over still here. This is nitro, of course. All the rest of this has been electric. Oh yeah, still good. Trouble with the nitro, if you don't continuously use it, it'll gum up that engine real bad. I think we had this one all apart. There's a video way back on the channel of it. And uh, we had it all taken apart, cleaned out, polished all up, put it all back together. And uh, that's the way she's gonna sit, I think, because I can't get nitro anymore. Well, I can, but it is so expensive now, so. I'm like, nope, we're not doing that. So those are just kind of sitting where they shouldn't really be. Uh, anyways, that's just your your uh, receiver in there and stuff. That'll have to be all rebound probably. It might still work, but you fill it up here and clear tank. You could see you know, how much you got as you're driving by and stuff. They get so dirty though, right? With that nitro stuff, it just coats it with everything. But that's basically essentially where I started. Got myself one of these and it's actually not this one. I think I've had, uh, this would be my third T-Max I think I've had. I had the original one, and I don't have it any, I've got parts of the original one, and I think the second one I got, I sold it to someone, and then I bought this one, if I remember right, because these are the newer style tires for it. The other ones are more like the, the tractor style tires, tractor tread tires. But uh, anyways, pretty good, uh, pretty good little truck these were, but very, oh, that's not very good. It's all falling apart. Very, uh, this, this engine wasn't bad, but the 3.3 that they had in these were just garbage. Constantly tuning them. They're constantly going out of tune. They're running lean. And then this blows up. So had many of those go like that. But anyways, this one is still kind of in parts and pieces. It's all here. And this is the... Um, Hyper 7 buggy. We kind of got into them a little bit, and I didn't really like the buggies as much as bashing with these. This thing was good, and it had a, um, oh, you know what? I still got this motor here, I think. Hang on. And yeah, that was the original 
Hyper 21 Turbo, it didn't last too long. I don't know, I wasn't crazy on this one, so, I mean, this thing I think still ran, but it had, that's right, it had air leaks all over the place on it, so I tried my best to seal it up all around the carburetor and stuff, it was just terrible. Couldn't ever keep a tune on that either. Oh. That one's pretty gummed up <laughs> as well. Needs to be all cleaned out. And uh, so I, I think I went on eBay or something. I looked up this. Um, this is an HPI. So this is made by um, Ofna, the buggy itself. This was an HPI, a big block, 5.9. K5.9. Man, man, when this thing fires up, holy smokes, did everybody look, let me tell you. That thing is a freaking beast. That piston diameter in that thing is the same size as one of our quarters. So that piston in there is just massive huge. It just ate fuel like crazy and that's the little fuel tank for it so it wouldn't be long sucking that thing right out and going through her. But this thing, we did a video on that way back too, and we tore it all apart and cleaned it all too because it had sat for a while and it went kind of gummy. I'm sure it's fine. Well. I wish I had some nitro to fire that up. I'd uh, put her back together and fire it up. But I put everything, you know, I was going to clean everything too, right? And I just never did, I guess. I just sort of sat there and lost interest, we'll say. But all, everything's got her screws in her. It should all go back to where everything was. But it does need a big cleaning, that's for sure. But uh, this thing wasn't super fast, but it hauled, you know what, like really good. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. So um, that's it for these ones, I guess, here. Uh, yeah, let me just think now. I've got one more little box, and it's a sort of baby to this guy. Let's get him out. Okay, this was my other favorite one, too. Even had its own little box. Oh, the 1 16th E Revo. Let's pull that body off. Look at that little thing. Now I have got a tire off there for some reason. And it looks like I left myself some. Oh. And of course the number if you will note looks like i left myself some differential casings i don't remember now what happened to this thing another parts here maybe two what else have we got uh -oh. okay more uh -oh. uh oh uh oh I must have blew a differential in this thing. I just don't really remember now. And uh, it's from the hobby store, I guess. And what did I pay for parts here? Let's just have a quick look. This thing was good. It was pretty fast, but it... Uh, whew, wow, did I ever get hosed. So I got... Uh, looks like I got tires, too. And they were $39 a piece. Or two of them for 79. 17 millimeter hex. That's not these ones though. These aren't a 17 mil hex on these. It must have been those other ones I had. Uh, and that's more like a 12 mil or something. Um, and then I got bulkhead front. They were eight bucks. And the ring gear and differential piston. Differential piston. Pinion, sorry. Pinion, I read that too fast. So this thing, it was uh, $27.98 then for that. Whew. And this, I guess I bought this on November 15th, 2016. The last five years already sitting here waiting to be replaced. Holy smokes. So this must have blew a differential or something. Well, I don't know how. Hmm. I don't know. 
but these are the little crappy, stupid Nike ads they give you with it. I've got uh, another bag. No, these are the ones, sorry. I think I got this figured out now. This was for the Raminator. Okay, over here. And these ones were for this guy here. I think. Oh, no. I'm fibbing you again because the batteries are still in this one. <laughs> So I don't know what they'll do, if there'll be any good now, 1600, 1600 million light posts, 7.4, this thing moved crazy, but this thing it had a, you know, you could, have, you could get, use the serial connector or the parallel connector. This was the extended runtime one, I like the other one too because it, it just made this thing go stupid, but instead of 7.4 it would be 11 point whatever, 11.8 or whatever, so, but anyways, yeah, those are still in there I guess so I remember where they were. But that'd be fun to get this little guy going maybe too and see, uh, you know what, I might just try juicing these batteries. Come on. Well, uh, wow. Okay. Yeah, we'll juice it. Maybe juice these and see uh, if I can figure out what's wrong with what's wrong with this thing. So, so these, I guess we're all for these, and that is right. Okay. 2009 when we ran those last. This one probably won't be quite as old, but uh, it's not far off, I don't believe. So. This little guy went pretty good though. I have to get the uh, controller out and it might just rebind to this. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with that. But anyways, for now, let's totally see that these batteries are any good. We'll have to do a uh, balance charge on them too to balance the two cells out while it's charging here. So, um, other than a couple of drones, you, you know, you guys have seen my drones. I think I've had three of them too. I'm not going to get them out because that's like a totally different thing. That's flight, flight stuff, right? So we're not going to get into the flight stuff. This is all ground stuff. Um, other than that, look at this. I do have. I told you I didn't have any nitro, but I do. But this is different stuff than I uh, was running in my stuff. So I don't know. It hasn't really evaporated too much out of there. So maybe that's all right. $25.99. Though it's way more expensive than this now. Let me give this a little whiff here and see what it smells like. Well, I've been into it, I guess. It does still smell pretty good. But uh, this stuff's pretty old now, too, so probably probably not good to use. And those are my batteries for the uh, the big Revo. It's pretty... They're kind of puffed out now. I don't know whether we should be using those anymore, but those were expensive batteries when I bought them. 8,000 milliamps times two, so you'd have 16,000 milliamps in these things. Man, oh man, that would go for an hour plus. <laughs> and then you'd be like, oh, I'm getting tired of doing this. I'm not sure. That's pretty hard. I don't think that's really too good. My main radio, DX3R Spectrum, digital radio, worked pretty good. Has 30 model memory in it too, which was good. Good little, uh, good little controller. All right, there's my Venom Pro charger. We'll plug them in. And uh, I'm use this for a while either. So you're not supposed to go any higher. So this is 1600 milliamps, so it'll be 1.6 amp. That would be the max you should go on that. Or you'll cook the battery real fast. So we're gonna go 1.6. 1. 1. Then you can set this, that's auto, but I'm gonna set it to, uh, this is a 7.42 cell, okay. And now uh, we got our, Cable thing plugged in here somewhere. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is our balance port charger here, so we're gonna hook this guy into here. 
Oui, oui. Hum. Wow. Okay. Now to be safe, in case that blows up on me. Okay. So, push and hold. Let's see what it does here. Do something a little okay. Oh, funny noise. Yeah, so it's eight. That's not bad. Uh, let's go here. 4.12, 4.12 per cell. So that's good. This will do up to six cell charge, this one. All right, I'm going to leave this for a little bit. And we'll see how much this number here goes up. And that's how much the battery took for a charge. I'm surprised that's charging, actually. Full 1.6 amp, anyways. Okay. I'll leave her for a few minutes until it goes beep, 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 in here. All right, that didn't take long, so uh, no smoke anyways. Let's see if it's hot. Oh. So that wasn't too bad. 210 milliamps it took out of that 1600 maximum, so that's pretty good. And they both ended at... 4.19 and 4.20. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the who? <laughs> Wow, that's kind of surprising. Okay. So we'll start this one now and see. So 210 that one. Hopefully this one's about the same. 406, 414, 413. That's pretty good. Alright, we'll leave her. Let her do her thing. Well, holy smokes, this one's even better. 166 all it took. Wow. Okay. Hmm. Well, hmm. Hmm. Okay. I brought over the Roto Start to show you too. This is what I use to start that K59. Put that in there, little dog bone thing, and <laughs> that just screams. Okay, so I gotta remember how to run this thing. on the mini e -Rave. Look at that. That's what I ran last, I guess. Sweet! That's even more better. So, I guess that's when I broke it and I'm like, oh, man, I just lost all everything. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, where? Now, I don't have a wheel back here. That shouldn't matter. We're not going to probably run it, run it tonight. Um, okay, so that's on. All we should have to do is turn this guy on. Let's see if what happens here. Oh, no, wait a minute. Sorry, my bad. Okay. A lot of 
cord in there. I wish I could have shortened these a bit. I probably could have the battery cables, but okay, now she should turn on. Oh yeah, look at that. Now. Hmm. Hmm. Well. I now know no, not too sure what's wrong with this thing other than it's missing its wheel. Oh, maybe I did fix it already. I got extra parts, that's what it is, because look, there's a pinion there. Oh, maybe I already fixed it. It's been that long, I just don't remember now. So now somewhere in here I'm hoping is the little nut. Now I gotta find my little wrench for that guy. All right, there we go. Well, I'm just gonna give a little buzz on the floor here maybe just to see if there's any funny sounds with it. It seemed like it sounded pretty good there, but... Okay. Hmm. Huh. Boy, boy. Hmm. Well, that might have had ourselves a repair video, but that seems like it's pretty darn good on its own. Hmm. Okay. You know, we got to remember to turn these off too. Oh. But uh, anyways. The different models in here. We go into here, model. No, I messed that up. Model. Raminator. So that's these little guys. Or that might have been that guy. Mr. Bean cars. Oh, that's this guy. Revo, that's this one. The X10, that's well, it's not on here now, it's over there. The X10 crawler. T Max, he's over there too now. Slash VXL, oh yeah, baby. Hyper 7, that's the buggy I put away already. So yeah, it's all the different models. Super handy having this. You can go up to 30, like I've only got eight there. Yeah, 30 models. Of course there's a 29. Good radio this one. I uh, really liked using this one. It was really handy. Oh, I want to run this one now. Okay, boom, boom switch it. Or there, away you go. Mini Erivo. Yeah. Travel steer rate, exponential reverse. Whole bunch of different stuff you can set up in here, trim set up. Good little radio, though it was expensive, it was like 350 bucks when I bought that, but good radio to have. So um, I got too much crap outside right now to run these things. I don't really like running them with the salt and crap and all that junk, so I probably won't run this until the weather turns nice again. And then maybe we'll get this guy going too, and uh, if I get batteries for him. If they're any good, not puffed out too much, but uh, this one, surprise, seems pretty good. But anyways, that is it for my models. RC car stuff that I've had over all the years here and uh, a lot of money spent on this stuff and parts and repairs and time and lots of stuff. But anyways, that's it for today. Thanks again for watching. We'll catch you all later and you guys have a good day.